Hello and welcome to the sixth webinar in 12D's training webinar series. My name is Lisa Stewart and I'm the Marketing and Communications Coordinator here at 12D Solutions. Our 12D training webinars will showcase common industry challenges, taking a close look at industry best practices and how these can be implemented using 12D model software. The aim of these webinars is to upskill 12D model users and broaden their understanding of the capabilities of 12D model. We also run regular training courses all around Australia and New Zealand. See our website for more details on these or indicate in your post-webinar survey that you'd like to be contacted about this or in-house training. We'll keep running these webinars regularly and recording them for posting on our website and on YouTube. Our first five webinars from this training series, as well as the first ten webinars from our Industry Solutions series, are available online if you missed those. During this live presentation, you'll be able to type your questions along the way, as shown on the screen, and we'll answer as many as possible throughout the webinar. At the end, I'll also read out some of your questions to the presenter for his insights if there's time. Today's webinar on attributes will be presented by Joel Alsop, who has worked in 12D model support and sales for Extra Dimension Solutions, our 12D distributor for New South Wales, ACT and South Australia, for over three years. Prior to that, he had nearly 20 years of experience in engineering with a variety of organisations around New South Wales. This webinar from the training series will discuss attributes in 12D model, which may be used to apply labels and symbols to filter data in various tools. Over to you, Joel. Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for joining today's webinar on 12D model attributes. My name's Joel, and I'll be your presenter this afternoon. In this webinar, we'll take a brief look at attributes and the ways we can use them. We'll go through some of the different types of attributes, such as project, model, team, and trimesh. We'll look at how we can use them in things such as map files and label map files. We'll also look at the attribute manipulator and how we can use attributes to change properties and other things. And finally, we'll look at how attributes can be used outside of 12D in files such as 12DA and IFC. So what are attributes? Well, drainage designers and surveyors will be familiar with them because they've been using attributes for many, many years now. As for us road designers, well, not so much. Attributes are often known as metadata and are used to store information. This can be at a project level and all the way down to individual vertices on a string. There are also special attributes called a group attribute that can store other attributes. This is referred to as the attribute path and so hence 12D model can group attributes into a hierarchy or tree. Now if we just quickly jump into 12D. Now we'll have a look at some attributes here. So we can see on our left hand side we've got our tree or our hierarchy. It's got a group called MTF and inside that is a group called pavement and in that we've got some pavement details. So an attribute has two parts. It has a name and it has a value. And it can store different types of values, such as integers, real numbers, text, and more. And as mentioned, attributes can be applied at different levels and to different elements, all the way from project down to strings, segments, and vertexes. Each string and vertex can also have its own individual attributes. Now, we'll jump back into 12D here. We'll have a look at some attributes on some trees that Surveyor has picked up for us. So we go to strings, properties, attributes and let's pick one of those trees. Now if we come across to the vertex tab we can see that we've got the type of tree, we've got the span, we've got the trunk diameter. And we've got a few different types around here. We've got eucalypt, it's a big one, it's 20 meters, it's got a two meter trunk. We jump over to our design, we pick up our drainage. We can see drainage have String attributes, we have pit, which is vertex attributes, and the pipe, which is the segment, also has attributes. So how can attributes be used? Well, apart from storing information, attributes may be used to apply labels and even symbols. This is often used by surveyors. Project attributes that we saw earlier can also be used in snippets. A little bit more on that later. So let's have a look at how we can use attributes in a label map file. So if we come up under File and Label Map Files, we come down to Edit. 
That one that I prepared earlier. Bring that in. And come down to our attribute data. You can see here. And we're searching on a name TR. And we're searching on the type of attribute. We're going to label the type and we're going to label the span. We're also going to put a prefix and everything on it as well. Let's come back up to file, label map files and apply. So the data we want to use is our trees. Our map files. And we're just going to put it on a model called labels. Now, to show that there's actually nothing on that model at the moment, you can see we've got labels in this model or this view already. And if we hit the label button, and there's all our labels. So instead we've got palms and we've got the spans of each tree. Now Moving on, we can also use our attributes in our map files. And we can use something called map file substitution. So the surveyor's already been out there, and as we saw, he's already picked up the span and the trunk size and the type of tree and everything like that. So we can use those in our map file rather than having to type the actual values in. So in our map file under the symbols section, the symbol size can actually be determined by this attribute value. This is done by placing a dollar at the start of the attribute path. Let's come up to File, Map Files, and Edit. Read that in. Come to Symbols and Vertex. You can see here we're searching on TR as a string name. We're also using attribute key. So we open one of those up. In the first row we're searching for palm. In the second row we're searching for eucalypt. We come to our symbols. We're applying a foliage 23 symbol for that one. And we're using the span to determine the size of the symbol. And the same in this one. Now if we just go ahead and apply that. So the model data. We've got our map file. And we'll put them on our labels. We'll convert. And you can see there we've ended up with symbols. We've got palm symbols, we've got eucalypt symbols, and the size has been determined by the span attribute. So how else can we use attributes? Well, we looked before at the project attributes. And we can do nice little things there like define payment details as project attributes. And then we can use those inside a snippet. When the payment details change, which of course you know, never happens, we simply update the project attributes and recap the MTF and everything flows through. No need to restart projects or edit snippets or edit MTFs and everything like that. It's all nice and seamless. So if we have a bit of a look at our long section here, you can see so we've got some payments. Come back to our attributes. Now remember we had in here, we had payment type 1 and payment type 2. We edit our MTF. If we have a look in the left hand side, you can see we've got a snippet in here. Just simply calling that payment type one and payment type two. Like that. Let's just go ahead with one of our payments. If we change that to something like five, like we'll that, we might change the thickness of our asphalt layer as well. Like that. Recalc our MTF, and you can see those changes have happened immediately. Now 
Now, the other one we can do is we can use our mapping file to actually apply attributes to our design. So again, if we come to strings, properties, attributes, we pick our try mesh here, which is our pavement. You can see we don't actually have any attributes on it. Come back to our design map file, come down to attributes. You can see here we've got our different pavement layers. And we're going to apply some attributes. Some simple ones at the moment, which is just the type of material that we're using. So we'll go ahead and apply that. This existing. Convert. Check that. You'll see that the pavement layers have got the material type on there. So how else can we use attributes? Well, there's a new feature in V11 called the Attribute Manipulator file, and it can be used to copy properties to attributes, copy attributes to properties. We can use attribute values to rename strings, change colors, we can move attributes around, we can copy segment attributes to string attributes and rename string attributes and rename segment attributes. So there's a number of different things we can do. So come back over here, we've got a couple of strings here, they're both red and we've called them both dummy. Let's have a look at one of them. You can see here we've got a string name and a string color as attributes. Same with our other one. So it's called Fred and it's yellow. On the utilities attributes, we've got our attribute manipulator file. So I'll have a look at this one called change property. And what it's going to do, it's going to use that attribute called string name, and it's going to rename the string. It's also going to use the string color to change the color on the string. If we go ahead and apply that, and apply it, and there we go, we can now see this one's been changed to colour green, and it's got the name string, likewise over here, our other string is now Fred and yellow. You can also use the attribute manipulator to apply attributes to our design. Coming back to our pavements, we simply have an attribute in there called material. We can use a file here, and we're actually going to give it a name. So we're going to take the string property, which is the name of the tri mesh, and we're going to apply it as an attribute. And apply. Finish. Now if we pick that again, you can see we've now got material and we've got the asset name, which is the same as the actual string name itself. So, can attributes be used outside of 12D model? Well, the answer is yes. Project attributes can be transferred to other 12D model projects via 12 da file. For the BIM people in the audience, 12D model attributes can be exported via IOC. And attributes can also be exported to DWG via an attributed block. So, coming back to take a look at our project attributes, we may start up another job and we might want to use the same payment details that we have in this project. So we simply up under file data output 48. That one. Now we need something to export, so we'll just take one of these palm trees. File 
out and pull it. Pull the X. And we'll just add a regular archive for now. Now, what we want to do is turn everything else off. All we want to tick on here is our project attributes. So I'm going to write that out. So that. We have a bit of a look in our 12DA file. You can see there's our point that we've output. And down here are our project attributes. Now I have another project here, which as you can see, we have no attributes in here and we have no models either. It's an empty project. So we'll go ahead and just read that 12DA in. There's our tree which has come in, so we can simply just delete that. Now if we come back up to projects and attributes, you can see that our attributes have come across. Now our other one is we can export our attributes to an ISC file. In the file data output ISC Express. Let's go to our pavements. And we want to make sure we export attributes ticked on. Just give it a file name. And write that out. And finish. Now I'll just pop that open well, whilst that's opening for a few seconds. As mentioned, you can also export your attributes via attributed blocks in a DWG file. And here comes our design. You can see there our payments come in. We select one of those. We can see there's our attributes. We've got the asset name and we've got the type of material. There's our asphalt layers, our LMC, our SMZ, and our LMC general fill. So that was just a simple brief overview of what you can do with attributes in 12D model. Obviously there's a lot more to it, but you know, hopefully that will get you started thinking about it and start to make more use of them. Thank you for listening today and we'll see you later. Thank you, Joel. The recording of this webinar will be available in coming days through our website and our YouTube channel. Our next two training webinars will be Fast Methods for Calculating Overland Flow on the 12th of July and Super Alignment Computators with Chains on the 17th of August. We'll also be continuing our Industry Solutions webinar series next week with a great presentation on document transmittals, so do see our website for details of all of those. We'll keep updating it with many more topics in coming weeks and also keep you posted through email and social media. And don't forget, we've also got our next 12D International Conference this July, which is drawing ever nearer, so if you haven't registered, jump on our website after this and book your place. If you need to contact us in the meantime, our details are on the screen now. That concludes our presentation for today. Thank you for attending and we hope to see you at future webinars.